I'm going to be straight with you. The problem plague in my town likely won't ever grace the pages of the New York Times. The minds over at CNN or ABC or whatever other mainstream outlet that gets off on sniffing their own farts will never let this story get any airtime. You won't see a picture of my town as it once was on any popular websites. However, what it is becoming, and what it is shaping up to be, you might see that sometime in the not-too-distant future. See, I live in a podunk Appalachian holler that to the folks who deem themselves the arbiters of culture and rectitude is an ugly, ignorant, racist stain on America. Our homes ain't pretty enough, our yards ain't landscaped enough, our vehicles ain't eco-friendly enough, our people ain't diverse enough, our guns ain't empty enough, and our opinions ain't theirs enough. We're the cousins they're embarrassed to admit they're related to. But, when the unsavory layers are peeled away, the core is still human. And what's happening to us, to people, it's damn near biblical. The earth is opening up, swallowing homes and the folks inside, and resealing itself without leaving the faintest hint of anyone having ever lived there. How is that possible? I first realized something was up when Reggie didn't show up to work. We've been friends our whole lives. We went to school together, celebrated birthdays together, met up for drinks every Friday night. So when nobody had seen or heard from him by lunchtime on a workday, I took it upon myself to drive over to his place and check on him. Reggie isn't the type to be depressed. The opposite, really. Happy, go lucky, even when the clouds are gray. But I'd be lying if I said the thought that he might have harmed himself hadn't crossed my mind. You can never know for sure what kind of inner demons people are struggling with. I rounded a corner, continued past the big oak tree where Reggie and I used to sneak off and smoke cigarettes when we were boys, and then pulled my truck up to a spot that I'd parked a thousand times before. I could have driven to Reggie's house with my eyes closed. But on that day, I sat idly in my truck, staring at an empty lot where Reggie's house once stood. Maybe I'd gotten so distracted that I'd driven past it, I thought. I shifted the truck into drive and spun the wheel to the left, ready to turn around, when I stopped. The house across the street was the same it always been, and it had always been directly across from Reggie's place, almost perfectly parallel to one another. I put the truck in park and climbed out, then walked across the street to the neighbor's house. I wrapped my knuckles against the door and waited for an answer, and before long, the old woman who lived there opened up the door and asked, Yes? Afternoon, ma'am. Sorry to bother you, but what happened to the house across the street? The old woman quizzically furrowed her brow. What do you mean? I stepped aside so she could have a clearer look. It ain't there anymore. Her mouth fell agape, and she stepped out onto the porch. What in God's name? R Reggie's house is gone. Part of me was relieved to have confirmation that I hadn't gone crazy, but that dissipated quickly now that it was clear that Reggie's house, which had been built on a solid foundation, had somehow vanished without a trace. You never heard nothing. No trucks or tools or... The old woman shook her head. Nothing. It don't look like a house was ever even there. How can that be? I don't know. What about Reggie? Have you seen him today? N no, I... You know what? The old woman turned and stepped back into the house. I'm gonna go call 911. Come on in. You go ahead. I'm gonna see if there's anything left on the ground. 
I'd be careful walking around over there if I were you. Something ain't right. I nodded and continued towards where Reggie's house had been while his neighbor disappeared inside to make the call. I lingered on the street a moment, searching the lot from a distance, then carefully stepped closer and tapped the yard with the tip of my boot. Confident that the ground was solid, I committed both feet to the grass and began prodding the lot for clues. There wasn't a brick to be found, not a screw or board or any material that I could find. It really was as if nobody had ever lived there before. I reached into my pocket and pulled out my phone, and held it to my ear as I attempted to call Reggie once more, and just like the other times, it went straight to voicemail. I waited for the beep. Hey, Reggie, mighty worried about you. I'm at your, uh, where your, well, your house is gone, and, uh, I don't really understand how that's possible, but, uh, give me a call if you get this. Okay, bye. I returned the phone to my pocket and sighed. Well, they ain't answering. I turned around to see the old woman standing in her doorway with her phone held to her ear. What? I asked. The dispatchers ain't answering. I started making my way back toward her, when all of a sudden, her home sunk about a foot into the ground. Dust puffed up from the foundation as wind chimes dangling above the front porch clamorously rang, drowning out the old woman's cries as she stumbled and fell backward into the house. I froze, untrusting of the earth beneath my feet. The old woman struggled to get back up. Her mouth was moving, but I could hear only the sounds of bells. As they gradually became quieter, her cries for help took the lead as she continued to try and push herself to her feet. I snapped back to reality and yelled, Hold on! As I began to hurry across the street. Then, just before I could make the first step onto her property, the earth opened wide and, in an instant, swallowed the house whole. I slid to a stop inches from a steep drop and watched the house break apart as it plummeted toward a distant sea of flame. Then, like a wound having rapidly healed, the earth closed back up, leaving behind no trace of the house whose porch I had been standing on only minutes prior. In the time since that happened, half the town has been devoured by the earth. The police station is gone as is the fire station. All local government buildings are as if they never were, as are so many homes and businesses. Those of us still living have tried to leave, but the earth has opened up around us and has remained that way. The gap is too large to cross any way other than by air, but the few helicopters the town had have all vanished, and this region is too mountainous for planes. There seems to be an intelligence behind all this, as the hasty removal of all local government and means to escape must be deliberate. But, at the same time, there is a randomness as well, when you consider Reggie and his neighbor and so many others. We've contacted the outside authorities for help and have received only silence. Same with the media. We can reach them as we can you. You are the proof that we can contact the outside. Please, help us. In the meantime, we wait on uncertain ground.